Hello ladies and gentlemen, An Idiot Imports is sponsored by PlayAsia, who most likely supplied this game to me unless I specifically mentioned that they didn't. You can follow the affiliate link in the description to buy this game from PlayAsia to support me and my channel, and you can use the coupon code BLUEVITA to save $3 off your order. Thanks for your support, enjoy the show. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Gendai Daisen Ryaku 2016. It's unfortunate that the last game of this series that I'm taking a look at at the moment at the very least, there might be more Daisen Ryaku games coming out on Vita but I can't be sure, is a bit of a flop. And I don't mean that in the sense that it's a bad game because I honestly can't be sure. There's just this really big problem with it that kind of makes me want to not play it because it just makes it a massive pain in the ass to actually play it. But we'll get onto that shortly. So let's just hop on into the game. There's not that much to see. You've got your typical options that'll let you turn things off like the map and the realistic battles and stuff like that. Your sound sliders, your background music, you know. Nothing too out of the ordinary. So we'll just load into my game real quick. I will admit I haven't played it very much. I've played it for a couple of hours just trying to fill around with it. But the problem I'm talking about comes up really fast and doesn't go away. So, well, we're just going to have to have a look around, aren't we? So, the idea of this game is that it's a lot like the World War II one. Uh, I can't remember its exact name, but it was like the Rise and Fall of Greater East Asia. So, the idea is that you've got, you've got individual units that you can build via this is not the right screen this is the right screen you've got individual units that you can build and of course you can build the units with the different packs with the different weaponry and stuff they've all got different abilities and it's all based on real life units and there's i think in this game there's 700 i think that's what the packaging said so yeah you can pick a bunch of different units ground c and air and you can build them for money or if you don't have the upgrade slots, like I don't, not the upgrade slots, the troop slots, you can't. Which is unfortunate, but there you go. And all the individual units that you have are here, and you can sell them to, I believe. If I remember the right button to do it, I don't. But there you go. Oh, yep, there you go. You have to select them via the shoulder buttons, that's right. And you can filter them by whether or not they're ground air or all of them. So yeah, you, you buy them and you can equip, and excuse me, you can equip officers to them as well. And officers are, they work just like they do in the World War II one where they've all got individual skills and in this one too, they've also got stress levels, experience levels, and they've got individual, um, I, I guess it's proficiencies with ground, air, and sea. So... It's actually not that hard to determine what they do. I mean, you can translate what, what it says on the screen here, but frankly, you don't really need to. You just need to find the one with the highest uh, proficiency in what you want them to be in for that particular unit and just stick them in there. And I mean, I know that's not the optimal way to play the game, but it's not the worst way to play the game either. It costs money to hire officers, and you can only hire a certain amount of officers, and you can also fire them. I don't think they actually die in this game. I think if the unit they're on dies... They get sent to the med bay and you have to wait for them to recover, which is actually kind of nice. You can also come here to do manual upgrades to your people as well, but it costs a ton of money. So I'd suggest being a little bit careful with that. And you can come here to see the unit encyclopedia, which has an absolute ton of detail on all the individual units. You've got your individual uh, histories there. I don't know what all that stuff in the middle is, if you want me to be perfectly honest. The translation came out a bit weird. Down at the bottom, you've got your typical weapons, your accuracy tables, how many shots they all have, yada, 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 yada. It's all pretty Dyson Ryaku-y. It, it all makes some sort of sense. Uh, what else is there to show? Not much else, really. Um, Here, yeah, this is where you come to assign the officers to the actual units. And the thing is... If you're playing a training mission, you can't bring in any units. If you're playing a, if you're playing an actual mission, 
you can only bring in the units you're assigned officers to. So you need to be constantly hiring officers in order to actually be able to bring units in. And that's honestly kind of annoying to me. It took me a little bit to figure that out. And it actually makes it kind of annoying because you can't buy more than a few officers at a time. So as you can see, I've only got 20 officers down in the bottom right there, 20 out of 20. You've only got room for 20 officers. So you've only got room for 20 units you can bring out onto the field. And the annoying thing about the mission briefings is that it doesn't tell you what exactly you might need in order to get going. So you might end up going on a mission where you do not have what you need to progress. And there's an absolute ton of potential situations they got going in missions here. So it's just kind of annoying, honestly. But we'll get into that shortly. This scene here lets you... Um, screen, sorry. This screen here lets you assign a base advisor. So you can get a little bit of a stat boost. I think this is um 5% cost down on developing units. I could be wrong on that. I know I translated it earlier, but I can't remember. And this is where you come to upgrade the individual facilities of your base. So for example, if I was to select this here, I could upgrade the amount of units I could have in the, um, in my airplane hangars and my boats and my stuff like that. Same deal here. This affects the amount it costs to develop units of that type. This gives me more officers. So you can spend a fair amount of money to like get more officers and obviously, um, and obviously brain work with me here. And just, you know, you can spend money here obviously on upgrades, but again, this works a lot like, um, the World War II one where if you spend your resources in the wrong place, you are entirely capable of just absolutely screwing yourself that is entirely possible but thankfully in this game if you get into a bad situation that you can't see a way out of you can just forfeit the battle and if you haven't spent any money yet that's a good thing because it doesn't take away any money so that's a that's a good start right artillery cannon there uh, m42 that's a, that's a is that a tank that kind of looks like a tank unfortunately you can't see what the full on oh well you can see what the stats of the fallen years i'm gonna lie i forgot about that so, yeah, you can buy as many as you can store, which is kind of nice. Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's an artillery cannon. That's a, more artillery, uh, should I, yeah, I'll buy some more ground troops. Apparently I can't press A on that now. Okay, yeah, probably because I was going to overflow my troops and all that. So, let's go and actually have a look at the game, shall we? Uh, I mean, there's not really that much to show if you've seen my previous Dyson Ryaku videos. But I do want to point out something annoying, though. There's no free mode in this one. So, you can't go into a map in a specific faction and then just go and blow the shit out of people. All you've got is the... All you've got is the two scenario styles we've got here. So, this one here, the second one is a they're preset scenarios where you can't bring in any more units you've got what you've got and you're stuck with it right and in the top one here you can pick a scenario and you will be put into the battle with the particular um scenario involved i'll just play one here but i'll probably go back and play one of the uh pre-built scenarios just to be safe but yeah in these ones, you are uh, put into the middle of the battle with the with a bunch of units already deployed on the enemies and allies' sides. You've got a ton of exposition going on here, which there's no point in translating because it'll just come out in gibberish. You've got your objectives here, which are fairly easy to translate. It looks like we are on a team with green and we have to take out red and yellow. It's a two-star mission, so it's probably not that difficult, but this is me we're talking about. I can, I can screw up finding my own ass some days. So here we go. Apparently I've picked a bad thing though because we are completely surrounded by mountains and I do not have the aerial troops necessary to get us out of this unless I was to just wander my way out via these mountains and even then it doesn't look like the best thing in the world. So green's got an absolute ton of units all over the place. Red and yellow, not so much. The problem with this whole system is that you have a very limited view of the play area like this is the maximum you can zoom out to which is the most annoying thing in the goddamn world because 
just, I mean, just look at this. You've got an absolutely tiny view of the play field. And, like, this is holding down X. If you don't hold down X, it moves even slower. Seriously, this is the most annoying thing in the world. Right stick doesn't do anything. L and R, well, R lets you zoom to whatever thing you've got involved here. And square and triangle don't do it. Well, square is supposed to do something, but it's not right now. You hit start, it lets you save your game, load your game, and change your options again. Select does nothing. I better just um, tell this guy to not do anything and move on. Yep, yep, there we go. And move on to the next turn phase. However, here comes the problem with most of these menus that this game has. They're all in Japanese, they don't have any dialogues, and they are perfectly capable of changing. They are perfectly capable... I'm just deploying a few units here. I'm not going to spend long in this scenario. I'm just, I just need to show it off. But yeah, you de that's how you deploy new units. You go to your particular area, you deploy the units, and then you have to wait until your turn for your next turn. So yeah, you can't actually build new units mid-match, which is what one of the things I liked about the other Dozen Ryaku games. Being able to build new units mid-match was a great way to, you know, help even the odds, turn the score, stuff like that. Here, it just, it just feels like it's actually missing, which is the most disappointing thing. But yeah, as you can see, the menu is entirely in Japanese and it's entirely possible that you can select the wrong thing and screw yourself. Like, I... Remember, just because I've hit it by accident way too many times, that this is Surrender. For some reason, I can't even access that menu option there. And these two here are the Terrain Type and the Troop List. And this is to go on to the next phase of the turn. Say hello to my dog if you can hear her footsteps. So yeah, we just have to sit here and wait for all of this to carry out. And of course, it does have the realistic, quote-unquote, 3D battles we got going on here. What this um, little percentage point thing has got to do with anything, I really don't know. But yeah, as you can see, that's just how that works. Let me see if I can find the option to turn that off. If the game will let me pause, it probably won't because that's just what this game does. All right. Now it's Green's turn, and Green's going to be attacking everything else. I think I can't turn it off, though. That's the thing. Um, I think the only way you can turn it off is if it's a battle that has nothing to do with you. And the problem with the battles having nothing to do with you is that they almost ha always have something to do with you. So, that's great. Here comes Yellow. Excuse me if you heard that. It's a shame, they've actually done an alright job with the 3D models and stuff this time. I wonder what would happen if they tried to make a sort of like... Well, not so much armor style game or Operation Flashpoint, if you remember the, that really old one and not the newer ones that weren't so much simulators as much as Call of Duty trying to be a little bit more realistic. But... If you, yeah, if you remember those, I wonder what they would, wonder what it would be like if they actually tried to do that. So, let's see. So now we can actually move our units out. The game does have a day-night cycle, just like the uh, previous games that are like this. So let's, uh, let's just move our jet and see what we can do about this. See, so here's the problem with the, trying to move units in this game. See this huge menu here that has a ton of options that you can't translate. And can actually change on you from time to time. Yeah, that happens a lot. That it, it, every unit has something like this, and it's just really annoying trying to actually play around this entire thing. Because what you can do in the menus changes depending on what you can do. So, for example, if I wasn't to put myself right next to an enemy, I wouldn't be able to attack them. So, the menu options that would be available on my shoulder buttons would change. So, imagine how much of a pain in the ass this is for someone who doesn't know Japanese to try and figure this shit out. Just imagine for a, for a single minute if you can. Yeah. Imagine just how 
annoying that would be. It makes the game, for someone who doesn't know Japanese, pretty much unplayable. I mean, you can try and force your way through, but it doesn't really help you out in the slightest, does it? And as you can see, since I actually played through that mission, I lost a ton of money. You can back out as soon as you get into the map if you find that, you, that you've that you picked a really bad scenario for the troops you've got. But otherwise, it's just going to come back and bite you right on your ass. There is a thing I can do about this though. As you can see in this area here, in this scenario here, there's no arrangement phase in this in this kind of scenario. There's only the turn phase, so you can't build anything. So yeah, you can't play it with like how every other Dyson Ryaku game has worked so far, which is disappointing. And there is also the ability to have the AI take your turn for you. Observe. So I'm actually going to let the AI just do that constantly and just let it play out how it plays out. Just so you can have a little bit of a demonstration about what this game's like. I'm going to try and turn off absolutely everything in this options menu here though. Maybe so that I don't have to like watch the battles happen. But this is me we're talking about. I'm probably not going to have that luck. start it'll save the settings and we can let the AI take my turn again so yeah overall just the interface of this game just makes it infuriating to deal with it considering that they put like fancy little pictures and kept the menus consistent between all the Dyson Ryaku games that we've had so far I'm really not sure why in God's name, in this game, they've decided just to not do that, right? I, I really don't know what convinced them for this game in particular to be like, Oh, we're not going to do all that nice UI stuff that we did in our previous games. We're just going to just fuck around with people. Yeah, I did manage to disable the uh, realistic battles, which was nice. Let the AI take my turn again. Except I still get to pick the weapons, apparently. And just like every Dyson Ryaku game, every weapon has a bunch of accuracies. And of course, terrain can affect everything, whether or not it's day or night, and all the different abilities that your guys can have, and stuff like that. And apparently, I didn't turn off the realistic battles. Maybe it's just when I'm being attacked and I'm not, like, doing the attacking? I'm not sure. Oh well, I'll let them play anyway, because this is going to be a short video even by my standards. So, if they do play, I'll just let them play out. At least the ones we haven't seen already. I, just, I love the idea of these tanks trying to take on the freaking helicopters. It just seems so silly. Also, that fog is like PlayStation 1 fog. It's kind, it's kind of great. It's not Nintendo 64 fog, because if it was Nintendo 64 fog, they wouldn't be able to see past their own barrels, but there you go. At least the loading times for the realistic battles in this one are a lot quicker than they have been in the previous games, but at the same time, it's still as annoying as hell to watch them. Like, if I could watch the battles in, like, say, a sort of picture-in-picture -picture style, that would be interesting, but it looks like that that's not going to be a thing, so... Yeah, that's unfortunate. I guess these battles are fun to play if you want to just use them as an excuse to try and up your money and stuff like that. Because being able to up the money you have would be great in this game. Um, let me see if I can just find that option to turn off the realistic battles. I'm, I can't for the life of me remember where it is. I, I translated these menus earlier, but... For the life of me, I don't think I ever wrote any of it down, which makes it even worse. So, uh, fun, right? Screw it. So, let's just continue on. It's a shame because I've always been interested in this sort of just like realistic style Dyson Ryaku. And having it, having this sort of whole. Being a private military company, which is what you're basically being in this in this game at the very least, 
there is a series of Gendai Dies and Ryaku games that does stuff like, um, that does do the sort of whole modern warfare sort of thing. It would be interesting to see that sort of game, but again, just the menu kills it. It really does. I mean, playing around with the officers in the um, World War II one was frustrating because it wasn't particularly obvious who'd be good with what. But considering that the officers in this game all have proficiency, that means that they are, for the most part, fine to deal with it. Also, you do have that problem where there are units that can be below other units, but at the same time, you've got those little grids there. Like that yellow and green square there, they'll tell you if there's something there. And you've also got um, that thing down the bottom right, they'll tell you if there's something there just by swiping over it, which is very useful indeed. They're very inconsistent with the UIs in, the, in these series of games, I feel. I'm not entirely sure what the deal is, but... That just... That just tends to happen for some reason. I'm not going to say I know why. It just... It's just a thing. I'm hoping that the next Dyson and Ryaku game they, they make goes back to the actual, like... Not so much intelligent UI design as much as approachable UI design. This, because this UI isn't exactly approachable from a non-English standpoint. But there you go. It just seems to work the same as any other dice in Ryaku otherwise though. So I, it's, it's not like I'm entirely like objecting to it in any way. I'm not entirely sure why I don't have the entirety of my Air Force just up here trying to wreck shit. But then again, that's my, that's my AI for you. So I have 93 grand at the moment. I wonder what would happen if I tried to back out right now. Oh, that's a, that's a UI transport, is it? What does this guy have left? Does he have anything left? He does not. That may be a problem. I'll just let the game continue. I don't know what else I have to say about it, really, and I'm probably going to stop the video right around now, just because there's really nothing else for you to watch, is there? Bunch of foot soldiers trying to take on some T-80s. That sounds like a brilliant idea. Yeah, let's just back out and um no we can't back out this way i have to back out via this menu so if i surrender what happens to the money that i've earned oh i get to keep it so that'd be a good way to just grind up some money just keep doing the free play scenarios let the ai take over for a while capture as many things as you can and then just hold on while you've earned some extra money but there you go i mean you you could play this for you, you could play this if you were able to figure out like the menu movement system but considering that the menu that the unit movement system but the unit movement menu system thing it just it says it changes on its own it's really hard to remember what does what and if you can remember or if you can actually read the text you've probably compl you've completely passed what i consider an idiot imports point at that point if you know japanese that well you'll probably be able to import everything i don't recommend and play it but yeah it's, it's a shame really just one minor thing one minor thing just makes this game absolutely unplayable and considering that they did it right in the previous couple of games it's just extremely disappointing i'm kind of surprised but there you go that was a look at gendai daizen ryaku 2016 it it's not a bad game. It's just one thing, one little thing. And just that one little thing just does it in. And that's unfortunate because I've, this is like the third game I've run into that is basically unplayable due to its usage of, of Japanese. And that is the most disappointing thing of all. I mean, obviously you can figure it out via trial and error, but if you do the wrong thing even once, because the default 
move thing is move and then just end your turn immediately don't don't prompt to attack don't prompt to do anything even if you're right next to something you can attack it's just yeah you can play any other one of the Dyson Ryaku games easier than this one so I would recommend those over this game pretty much any day of the week even the even Dyson Ryaku Perfect which is a little bit of a pain in the ass to play due to its UI is still better than this so this has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.